Hey Wizard, so I wanted to do a quick video on correlation or specifically correlation related to trading and go a little bit into the sequence of that. So for example, what impact does this price over here have on say this price over here? What are the relationships between historical prices and the current price? But not only that, if I looked at all of the features in a data set, such as the volume over here, the open high, low and close, all of those things, if I took a look at everything, how do the relationships look to something I might be trying to forecast or predict? Because if I can do that, then I can make a lot of profit. And so that's the hunt, right? That's the trader's journey or the quant trader's journey. And that's what I'm going to talk about here. So very quickly, I'm going to run some code. You don't need to know what it is. If you're not into programming or Python, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to talk about code. But what I do want to do is show some charts and graphics um, to help to illustrate and explain what I'm doing and you know what the information is and what it's giving me or not giving me. And so that's what we're going to do over here now. So here I've got just something I pulled together this morning, which is just a very basic uh, bunch of code that pulls some data and then analyzes that data. So what I'm going to do is just pull the data. I actually downloaded it from Crypto Wizards um, because I wanted the Binance uh, based data for Chainlink and Ethereum. So just like this chart here, Chainlink Ethereum, that's the data I'm actually pulling here. And then what I'm going to do is just add some features or columns to that data and just take a look at the data as well. So I'm going to also add something called a target and then I'm going to look at this data. So a lot of you who have watched videos on this channel already know what the target means and all that stuff. Anyone using the platform is very well versed now in that. Um, but this is something that I'm going to start with as a starting point, right? So I've got my close, I've got my volume, I've got my quote asset volume, the number of trades that day, um, the taker buy base asset volume and quote asset volume. Uh, so all of this information, then I have the returns, which is based on the close price. I have the open returns, high and low returns, the day of the week represented as a number. So zero to six and then the day of the month represented as the day of the month. So I want to see, are there any relationships between all of these columns or what, what we call features, all of these features and what we'll call the target? Are there any relationships? And by relationships, what I mean is correlation. So I'm actually looking for correlation here. The target is just saying, did tomorrow go up or down? If tomorrow went up, it's a one. Tomorrow went down, it's a negative one. Uh, and again, this is just because I really like this binary view um, to try to predict because predicting direction is phenomenally difficult. It's almost impossible. And so for me, this is what I'm always sort of throwing in there, right? Does it have any, any influence on that direction? So it might just not be the direction of the price. It could be the direction of the volume. Or, or the target of the volume. So did the, uh, not volume, sorry, volatility. So you might want to predict volatility. And that's something I've actually found is easier to uh, forecast. Uh, not easy, easier. <laughs> so, you know, so that's what we're going to try and do here. And to do that, we're going to plot this correlation matrix. And so all this thing is, it, and I'm not going to talk about the code, but it literally was one line of code to actually calculate what the correlations are between all of that stuff, which is really cool. It's something I love about Python. But now I have this heat map that shows me the correlations. So for anyone who hasn't done correlation before, a one means there's a perfect relationship, like a perfect correlation between the two data points that you're looking at. A negative one means there's a perfect inverse correlation and zero means it's pretty much useless. And so you'll have numbers in between those ranges and that'll tell you how correlated or not correlated something is. So for example, if I look at the close price down here, the close price compared to the close price has a perfect correlation, which makes sense because it's comparing to itself. So it should have a perfect correlation. But the close price to, I don't know, let's take something like this, the returns has no correlation. Which is very interesting because when you go and you do technical analysis, <laughs> you're looking a lot at the, basically you're looking at the close price. And so, you know, the close price is not telling you anything about the direction of the next day. It's telling you nothing, which, uh, which is interesting in itself. 
And so that's what this is saying. And you can see there's a lot of numbers here close to zero. So when I look at this, I just ignore, I ignore most of this. But then, you know, it gets kind of interesting because we start getting into some other territory, for example. So here, for example, when I look at, I don't know, volume, that looks kind of interesting against the taker by base asset volume. So that's got a very, very positive correlation. And it's got some correlation uh, against the quote asset volume. So you can start to see where the relationships lie. And that's, that's actually what I really like about these heat maps is because visually you can start to analyze this and you can very quickly start to see where, you know, where the relationships are. So here's another interesting one, but it, again, it won't surprise you and it's not going to make you rich, unfortunately. But have a look here at the returns, the, the low returns. So the low data, what is the low? The low is the lowest price of that day is very high, highly correlated to where, where the price opened at. No surprises there, right? There's an 85% correlation between those two things. Did you know that? Well, now you do. And this is what's really cool about it. The high, we can see a correlation here to the close. So it's over a 50% correlation, 0 0.64. It's pretty high, actually. So the high has a lot of influence over the close. Now, this is interesting because one of the things that you could do very well at is if you could predict when you've had the high of that trading day. So is there a way that you can predict when you've had the high? Because that can actually then tell you something about what the close returns might be. And therefore, you might be able to place a trade on that. So, you know, this is just very interesting in general, but it doesn't answer the question that we wanted to go and look at before, which was how much influence does this price have, say, on this price or this price here on this price? And to look at that as more like a sequence, right? And the reason why this is very important is because a lot of people, including myself, right? I've made this mistake over years, actually. A lot of people, including myself, will try to build machine learning models like deep learning models, neural networks, where they will feed in sequential information, which I'm not saying is the wrong thing to do, by the way. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's what sequential information you feed in that's very important. Because there's something called autocorrelation. And autocorrelation will tell you how much influence something has over itself. Now, I'm going to actually show you some charts on that now. Because if you can run autocorrelation, it's going to, number one, dispel a lot of myths mathematically very quickly for you, right? It's going to just say, nope, there's absolutely no predictability by just looking at, say, this one price uh, against itself and, and seeing what the relationship is. And therefore, it's kind of pointless feeding it into a sequence to try to predict if I give you the last 10 days, can you predict tomorrow? So, for example, um, you know, a lot of people, including myself, would say, OK, let's give a machine learning model all of these days here and then tell it, OK, predict this this time step here. You know, so if it looks at that sequence, can it predict that? And then if it looks at this sequence, right, including that day, can it predict that? And then if it looks at this sequence, right, and it just and you just keep doing that. And this is a sequential model. And for those of you who are interested in machine learning, you know, things like transformers or convolutional neural networks or long short term memory neural networks are used to do this, right? They, they have a memory and they remember a pattern in a sequence and whether it was effective or not. And so before you go and build an entire deep learning model on how to do that or to try to do that even by eye to say, oh, yeah, I can see, you know, this head and shoulders pattern when this happens, that happens, etc. Before you go and do all of that, Look at something called, you know, autocorrelation because it's it's kind of interesting. And so what I'll do is I'm just going to go and plot for you the autocorrelation using the close price quickly. Now, you can see that this is very highly correlated. So what this is telling you is, look, on day um, and I'm, I'm ignoring day zero because day zero will always have a one. So, for example, if I was to actually include that, you would see here day zero that's always a one. It's a perfect correlation to itself. The day before is very correlated to the current day. The day before that is very correlated. But that's looking at the price. That's looking at the price. So this is going back 50 days. 
And that this is saying, you know, 50 days ago to now, there's still very high correlation to what the price will be, right? The actual number, the absolute value of the price. Let's actually go back something like 300 days. Now, if I look at 300 days ago, like a year ago, the price of a year ago, I can tell you has nothing to do with the price today. Based on this, nothing, zero. And then a lot of you might be wondering, you know, what is this, this blue sort of shaded thing here? This is sort of giving you that test statistic. So it's saying, you know, if, you, if you're inside this blue area, there's no statistical significance to this finding, none. Or, or it's virtually none. Um, if it's above this blue line, that means there is some statistical significance. So these, you know, more recent days have a lot of influence on the current price, but that's the absolute price. You're going to make zero profit with that knowledge, right? That's not going to make you any profit whatsoever. So what you might decide to do is to actually, rather than looking at the absolute price, is just to look at the returns. And when you're doing machine learning or data analysis, the returns, i.e. the percentage change in this case, are far more useful. And so what we'll do is go and plot what does this autocorrelation look like with the returns? And you can see all of a sudden there's just none. This one seems to be kind of popping its head up here. What is that like? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven days, but really not very much at all. Now one of the things that we could do as well is we could change this target. Um, for example, we could change the returns. We could say you know, let's try to predict a one or a zero if it was 20% higher than yesterday, etc. And see, you know, what that looks like. And then you start to see some more interesting patterns. But again, nothing that is going to make you rich. Now, that said, I did a video on this a long time ago, which is why I'm making a video now. Uh, I didn't cover it in this much depth. But I I'd actually run a Python program in the past to analyze all coins on Binance, all of them and to find anything that has autocorrelation. And there was a coin, in fact, it's on a video, I should try and dig it out here for you. There was a coin that out of all of them did have some autocorrelation. So your more liquid coins like Bitcoin and Chainlink and all of that, they're, not, they're just not, it's gonna be so random. But these other coins, the, the lower traded, excuse me, coins, they do, some of them have just enough to say that there's a statistical significance. And so what that means is those are the kind of coins that you can plug into a machine learning model, right? Those are the kind of coins that you can plug in there and say, find me, predict for me tomorrow, or predict for me the next five minutes, or predict for me whatever. And that's how you can do that. So just remember, autocorrelation, this is very, very useful for telling you if the sequence has anything to do with the future. So I can tell you, you know, day minus 30 has a lot to, uh, to do with, you know, the current day here in terms of the absolute price, but it's not going to tell you if it's higher or lower. And that's what makes us money as traders, right? Is if you're trading, you need to know, is it going up or down? Unless you're trading volatility, in which case you need to know, is volatility going up or down? <laughs> so... These are the kind of things, um, you know, that you need to think about. Now, one more thing. There's an argument against everything I've said here in this video, which is, OK, right. But what about the combination of these? So, for example, are there cases where, let's say, the number of trades is less than 5,000 and the volume is above 20 million and the high, you know, was lower than yesterday's low, right? So that kind of thing where it's just like, you know, can you find for me the right combination of things that have an influence and a relationship with whatever it is you're trying to predict, i.e. in this case, the future returns, right? Now that's where you would use, well, that's where I use machine learning. So that's when, for example, if I'm interested to see, can I build a model that could predict that. That's when I'm using like logistic regression or XGBoost. A lot of you might know LightGBM or CatBoost, all of these different machine learning models. And actually the reason why for crypto wizards, I built the machine learning prediction tool wasn't to build something to automatically predict things for me in the future. 
It's for rapid fire testing. It's the fastest way for me personally. I built it for me. It's the fastest way for me to pull data, have an idea and go, I wonder if there's a, a relationship if I add this data feature in and then run it through that. And it tells me the feature importance for that prediction. And I've done lots of videos on, you know, using that predictive model to find those here on the channel. If you'd like another one, just put in the comments, put something like boost me um, and I'll do a very quick video on it, you know, with this sort of tone, with more angled at this uh, type of direction. I'm happy to do a video on it. But that's when machine learning comes in. Now, I know a lot of folk have asked for, can we do a training course on machine learning applied to trading? Because actually there's very little material on that and it's very difficult. And that's the kind of thing we try to solve right here as a community. We try to solve the difficult stuff that we actually want, yet there, there tends to be a lack of support and information for it. That's what Crypto Wizards is essentially doing. In, in building the material for all that machine learning stuff, you know, what's become very interesting to me is I just don't think we have anything strong enough yet. You know, I don't, I don't want to put out a course teaching you how to do something for those of you who are interested until we have something to actually run that gives you that. Like, for example, the triangular arbitrage course or the statistical arbitrage or the trading execution with flash loans courses, they give you something you can go and do, right? They give me something I can go and use and do. Um, I'm very close to having something that I think would be useful for people there. But the reason I'm struggling with it is because I'm trying to bring reinforcement learning into that. If we're going to do machine learning, I want to do the whole trifecta. I don't just want to do, you know, your XG boost and logistic regression type thing. I'd also like to do unsupervised learning. So finding hidden relationships that a machine can find that you can't find and not even know what those are, like something called PCA, principal component analysis. Also want to bring in uh, deep learning and therefore also bring in reinforcement learning. And for those areas, the deep learning and the deep reinforcement learning, I'm struggling to find something that could a trader could actually go and deploy and make profit with. And so I just won't put something out until I can do that. So that's just in case you were wondering on that. And here you go. So this is correlation. This is how you can find out more about that. I am uploading some machine learning code. A few guys in the Discord have asked for it. So I'll pop that in the Discord in the GitHub area where all the GitHub code goes, either end of this week or early sometime next week, depending on progress. But I hope you found this interesting and useful, and I really hope it saves you time and energy in the future. Until the next one, take care and talk soon.